here we are now in 2012. What's going on today and what do you see in the future for ductoscopy? The limits of ductoscopy is since we're using a scope that's under a millimeter in diameter, right. we really can only get out brushings and clusters of cells, not real tissue biopsies. Okay. And we're still heavily dependent upon tissue biopsies in breast pathology. Um, the Germans have begun to develop a series of small scopes and various ways to get uh, biopsies. They're using some new technology where they use autofluorescence uh, to identify abnormal areas in the ductal system, much as is being done in bronchoscopy, okay. to figure out areas to biopsy. You're still getting a chunky cytology, which requires you to use molecular markers instead of traditional pathology methods to identify high-risk lesions or cancers. As we're learning from all the gene array studies that are being done in breast cancer, right. we're quickly assembling a huge array of things right. that would tell us who has a cancer and who doesn't. Right. Right. So the, that technology, the molecular pathology technology, needs to catch up to our ability okay. to scope the breast. Okay. And we're probably a few years from that. The other thing that uh, is probably crucial in the whole role of ductoscopy is uh, we have vast majority of the world that does not have mammographic screening and will never really be able to afford mammographic screening. And for those areas of the world, oftentimes nipple discharge is a more common presentation for breast cancer. And there's no other way to screen high-risk women than to look at cytology from the nipple. If we can come up with a molecular cytology approach to screen women from little bits of nipple fluid, anybody who had an abnormality, then we could scope and find where the abnormality was and potentially treat it or prevent it from progressing to cancer. So the real hope for breast cancer throughout the third world and around the world that the, outside of the U.S. and North America and what, Europe is going to be some better way of screening for pre-malignant disease and arresting its progression long before it ever turns into cancer in the first place. Yep, very good. And, and your good friend and mine, Susan Love, I know, has been working on this. We wish Susan well. She happens to be. She's been recovering from an illness here recently, and, and I know she's excited about this whole area as well. Mm -hmm.